Good morning guys! Today, we are going to discuss Module 2 of Strategic Financial Management on Financial Statement Relationship. After the completion of the module, students will be able to first identify relationship among and between elements of financial statement, and number two, prepare the fundamentally related financial statements in accordance to international financial reporting standards. The topics are First, the income statement or statement of financial operation. Number two, balance sheet or statement of financial condition or position. And number three, the statement of cash flows. What is financial statement? Financial statement is the summary of historical accounts of the business. Financial statement can be prepared monthly so as to determine the company's profitability and stability. Big companies prepare the quarterly financial statement together with the financial analysis in order to report the company's pathway to the company's board of directors and its stockholder. A need of internal audit and financial analysis is needed to assume the reliability of the financial result. Remember guys, financial statements are made of the following. Number 1. Statement of Operation it is better known as income statement. Number two is statement of financial condition or better known as balance sheet and it can also be called a statement of financial position. Number three is the statement of changes in stockholders equity. Number four, the statement of cash flow which it can be direct or indirect method and the notes to financial statement. So let's start with the income statement. Income statement is a combination of revenue minus all the expenses incurred in order to get the net income of the company. Revenue minus expenses is equals to net income or the net loss. Revenue means earning made on selling of products or services before deduction of all related expenses. Revenue can be called as the following. Sales if the business is a merchandising business. Service income if the business is a service business and revenue if the business is a corporation, whether the business is a merchandising, service, or manufacturing. What about the expenses? Cost of sales are actually purchases of merchandise or materials needed to complete the product, while operating expenses can be divided into selling expense and administrative expense. Selling expense are other expense made to complete the production of the product, while admin expense are expenses not related to the product but needed to pay and record as part of the operation of the business. To understand more of it, you may open the video link, Corporate Income Tax. See the listed cost of sales and operating expenses. Example. This is the Proforma Income Statement if the business is a merchandising business of a sole proprietor and a partnership. This is the sample pro forma income statement of a service business of sole proprietorship and partnership. What if the business is a corporation? So here, uh, you can see the performa income statement of a merchandising business. At the end of the operating income, there is now a computation of the income tax, which is 30%. Unlike the previous um, sole proprietorship and partnership, there is no computation of any income tax since they are dealing with the individual computation of tax. This is the sample computation if the business is a service business. So, it computed also the income tax which is 30% of operating income. What if the business is a manufacturing business? So, here is the performa income statement. We have sales, we have the cost of sales, but uh, it is computed uh, with regards to the raw materials at the raw materials beginning is equals to raw materials available for use less raw materials end now we have the raw materials use 
then we need to add the direct labor and the factory overhead. So these three is known as the total manufacturing cost. Then after the computation of the total manufacturing cost, we need to add the work in process beginning is equal to total goods put into process and then we need to deduct the work in process end so as to get the cost of goods manufactured. Then we need to add the finished goods beginning. We have now the cost of goods available for sale. Minus the finished goods end, we have the gross prop uh, we have the cost of goods sold. And then uh, the cost of goods sold will be uh, deducted to the sales in order to get the amount of the gross profit. Minus the operating expenses, so we have the operating income. So in operating income, we need to get the income tax, 30% of it, in order to get the net income. Uh, the difference here is, uh, it is more, more uh, expenses when it comes to manufacturing business because uh, we need to compute three kinds of inventory which is the raw materials inventory, the work in process, and the finished goods inventory. Now, let's start with the discussion of the balance sheet account. Balance sheet are real accounts and usually all accounts will be seen at the end and at the beginning of the accounting period. It is also called as a statement of financial condition and a statement of financial position. Balance sheet includes three main accounts such as asset, liabilities, and capital. The amount of asset should be balanced with the amount of both liabilities and capital. Assets are usually a debit side account. Regional entry is on the debit side. They usually increase or decrease based on the daily transaction of the business. Assets are divided into three accounts. The following are the current asset, the non-current asset, and the intangible asset. Current asset is composed of cash, accounts receivable, marketable securities, merchandise inventory, and prepaid expense. While non-current accounts are divided into three, which is the property, plant, and equipment. While intangible assets are assets that cannot be seen but will be part of your asset, and they are copyright, franchise, patent, software, etc. Liabilities are usually a credit side account. Original entry are on the credit side. Liabilities includes the following. It includes current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are liabilities within the span of one year, while non-current liabilities are liabilities within the span of one year or more. Current liabilities are composed of accounts payable, notes payable, short-term, accrued payable, income tax payable, rent, interest, insurance, salaries, and other current payable. Well, non-current liabilities are composed of notes payable long-term, stockholders payable, bonds payable, and other non-current payable. Capital are usually a credit side account. Original entry are on the credit side. If the business is a sole proprietorship, you can call your capital as owner's capital or owner's equity. If the business is partnership, you can call your capital as partner's capital or partner's equity. If the business is a corporation, you can call your capital as stockholder's equity. So we have capital beginning, add net income, total, minus drawing is equals to capital N. And this kind of presentation is used when the business is a sole proprietor and partnership. But if the business is a corporation, we have this kind of presentation. Stockholders' equity, total, and then we have the retained earnings beginning at the net income is equals to retained earnings end. To understand more of it, you may open the video link How to Easily Understand Accounting in Business and Understanding Current Asset Accounts Easily. Now, let's start to discuss the cash flow statement. So, According to Wikipedia, a cash flow statement is a financial statement that show how changes in balance sheet accounts and income affect cash and cash equivalent and break the analysis down to operating, investing, and financing activities. According to Investopedia, a cash flow statement is a financial statement that summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalent entering and leaving a company. 
In reality, there is a big difference between the net income and cash flow. A net income vary on the result on the period of time, meaning there is no chance that the result of the income are already earned since some of the sales are not yet collected. A cash flow is considered as record on the point of time since it really determines what happened to the cash, whether you collect, you pay, or you receive cash either from sales, collection, or any transaction that indicates the increase or decrease of cash. When we say cash flow statement, we considered what happened to the operation of the business, the investing activity of the business, and the financing activity of a certain business. The concern here is cash. As a financing staff, we are required to determine the authenticity of the cash recorded on the balance sheet against the end result on the statement of cash flow. There's no way that it will not be balanced since it will only serve as a summary. Under cash flow statement, the amount of cash that you will see on your balance sheet should be balanced with the net or decrease in cash in the cash flow statement. A cash flow statement can be a direct method or indirect method. The difference between the two methods is as to how the operating activities will be presented. In direct method, cash paid and cash received for that particular account are giving emphasis. In indirect method, the difference between the present and past year of current asset and current liabilities account are giving emphasis. Increase in current asset means deduction, while decrease in current asset means increase. In current liabilities, increase in payables means increase, while decrease in payables means decrease. Also, in indirect method, we need to get the amount of the net income and add back the depreciation and the amortization. And we can increase or decrease the gain or loss on the sale of the non-cash asset. So guys, when you say statement of cash flow under direct and indirect method, the only difference is how the statement of operating activities are presented. Under direct method, we are dealing with the what happened to the actual cash. If it is increased, then we need to add. And if there is a decrease in payment, we need to deduct. So we also need to include the recording of the payment of interest and the payment of income tax. Under indirect method, the statement of operating activities is like this. We have the net income or the loss. We need to add back the depreciation expense and amortization expense. And if there is a gain we, on disposal of non-current asset, we need to add. And if it is a loss, we need to deduct. While under current asset and current liabilities or current liabilities, if it is increased, then we, we need to deduct. If it is a decrease, then we need to add. While in the payables or the current liabilities, if it is an increase in, in liabilities, we need to add. And if there is a decrease, we need to deduct. Okay? So, totality of it will be the net cash flow from operating activities. This is what you saw on your cash flow statement under direct method so we di we divided it into three the statement of operating activities the statement of investing activities and the statement of financing activities so under a statement of operating activities this is part of your working capital increase in collection will be added decrease in payment will be deducted payment of interest and payment of income tax will be deducted under Statement of Investing Activities, the purchase of property, plant, and equipment is deducted and the cash received from sales of property, plant, and equipment are to be added. Then the Statement of Financing Activities uh, will record the receipt from long-term borrowing. So anything that you receive from long-term borrowing should be added. Then we need to add all the net cash flow bought from operating, investing, and financing activities to get the increase or decrease in cash. Whatever the result is, it should be the same with the end result of the net increase in cash and on the balance sheet. What if the computation is under a statement of cash flow indirect method? What we need to produce here is the statement of operating activities. 
it is under the period in time. We need to record the net income or loss, it's either add or deduct, then add back the depreciation expense and amortization expense. If there is a gain or loss on disposal of the non-current asset, we, we need to add or deduct this. And then, any increase of current asset should be deducted and any decrease should be added. While in accounts payable, any increase should be added and any decrease should be deducted. The same is the computation under investing activities and under financing activities. Guys, after finishing this in the subtopic of the video, please answer the post test. This is the end of presentation module 2, Financial Statement Relationship. Bye-bye guys!